Hello, and welcome back to the Cassidy Car Cave. Today, we're gonna to talk about the 2003 CL600, and really all CL600s, and why I think this twin-turbo 12-cylinder beast is one of the best cars Mercedes ever made, right after this. Okay, we're here at the warehouse today. Let's talk about the Mercedes CL600. Um, there's a few things about me that are complete blasphemy as far as any car guy is concerned. One of those things is I don't care about zero to 60 times. I don't care about horsepower quotes. I don't own a stopwatch. I've never taken a car to a, uh, a, a dynonometer to get it tested for a horsepower. None of that. Uh, I really don't care. Cars to me are about a combination of feel, performance, handling, comfort, uh, reliability, rareness slash cool factor, uh, just kind of the whole mix. And so there's a lot of cars out there where you can take a look at a zero to 60 time or a horsepower number and it looks amazing. But really the car itself, eh, not that great and doesn't stand the test of time. This car, I think, is gonna stand the test of time and already has to a certain extent. It's 17 years old. It still looks relevant, uh, still a good looking car, really well designed, but the 12 cylinder twin turbo on engine in this car is just unbelievably fast, torquey, smooth, uh, quiet, it makes the car comfortable to drive. It's a true GT cruiser. And these CL600s, they just don't get the credit they should amongst the car people out there. Uh, we're gonna talk about sleeper cars a little bit later in the video, but this is a sleeper car. You know, these cars were $130,000 when they were brand new. And you can get one for less than 10% of that now. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why, and we'll talk about that too. But let's talk about the car, maybe just go for a walk around. I, I just love these cars. There's not that many of them, so they definitely tick up the, uh, the, the cool factor on a car. There's not many CL600s out there. Now there's a bunch of uh, CL55s, AMGs, and uh, you know, 12 cylinder four door Mercedes S600. But this car, there's just not that many. 2003 was the first year for the twin turbo 12 cylinder engine in this car and man, did it make an improvement. Uh, originally, they came out with just the, the V12, and it was smooth and fast, but boy, when these turbos spool up, you're just not gonna find very many cars faster from 20 to 120 than this car. And I don't need a stopwatch to tell me that. You can, you can see that, you can feel it when you're in the car. We'll go for a ride, I'm not gonna go 120, but uh, we'll go for a ride and, and let you see it and feel it. The styling on this car is great. Uh, still looks really nice. Uh, everything's holding up really well, fit and finish wise. Mercedes did a really nice job in this era, uh, putting these cars together so that they would last. Now there's some issues I have basically with any of the Mercedes cars from this era. And that is the kind of uh, cheapening of the AMG Sport Package, uh, the, the AMG brand. And you can get this car with the AMG Sport Package. That's what this one is. It says AMG on it, right? It's an AMG. Not really, not to any true uh, Mercedes guy. These cars, the AMG Sport Package, you get the uh, spoiler here. You get the uh, body skirts down below, a couple of pieces of chrome, and maybe most importantly to folks, that AMG badge. But it's not an AMG. You know, AMG was the, uh, the, the hammer, right? The, just the, the cool cars coming out of, of Germany in the 90s, that AMG was taken and basically hot rodding. Uh, and so to get a true AMG, the engine has to be done, right? It can't just be a, a regular engine, suspension. It has to, has to be tuned. Uh, well, these weren't. These were just the AMG sport packages. So, but enough about AMG and how I think it's kind of cheap. Uh, AMG's incredible, but the sport package, eh. The rest of this car is amazing. Uh, these cars are super comfortable to drive. Now, sometimes you might not think, ah, who cares? I want, what's, what's the zero to 60 and all that? Well, you're gonna care uh, after you drive this car, or any car after a while about, you know, how comfortable is it when you just have to go pick up the kids or run down and get a coffee or something like that. It, these cars are super comfortable. In fact, this car is a car that I drive if I've gotta go 
you know, 100, 200 miles away down the interstate, this is the car to do that in. It just is so smooth. I've done a few little upgrades. These wheels are different. These are 20 inch uh, wheels that I put on the car. I think the ones that come with this car just make it look a little bit too uh, sedate, a little bit too mundane. So you gotta dress it up a little bit, and I did that. Tinted the windows, maybe that puts a little too much flash on this car, uh, but I did it, and I'll live with it. Uh, but what is really nice about these cars is just the way they cruise down the road. Yeah, you can go as fast as you want in it because you're never gonna know how fast you're going anyways. The car is so smooth and so quiet and so uh, amazing in the way it handles just eating up pavement. Now you may also say, well, quiet, I don't want quiet. I want a big, loud exhaust and, you know, if you want to sound like you're going fast, yeah, there's lots of cars out there that do that. You can get a stainless steel exhaust kit for, uh, for anything and make it sound like it's going fast. But if you want to feel like you're going fast, 12 cylinders, twin turbos, my oh my. Let's take a look at the inside and see why I think this car really is doing a good job of standing the test of time. Um, a lot of automotive commentators out there I agree with. Uh, the, the main focus these days on cars seems to be technology. The more USB ports you have and more uh, Bluetooth ability you have, the, the faster and better the car is. Nonsense. Uh, nobody cares about that or nobody should in a, in a cruising sports car. What's important is fit, finish, comfort, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, so this car has no technology, really. You know, it's got a navigation system that was outdated a year after it was put in. I mean, let's be honest, the most modern navigation system now in a car is not as good as last year's cell phone. Nobody uses a navigation in a car. Screen looks cool, uh, but so this one's just as outdated as the, as the ones built last year. But the rest of the car, oh my, really beautiful. Um, there are things you get in this car that you probably would have to really spend a lot of money to get anymore. You know, wood steering wheel, you get those anywhere nowadays, right? But this is real wood, uh, real hand-stitched leather. Mm, suede headliners, don't believe me? You can write your name in this suede. Uh, it's so nice. It goes all the way to the back of the car. You know, ventilated, perforated, or perforated seats that actually do cool and feel nice. Everything about this car was just really nicely done. Uh, that's real wood. You know, if I held a match up to it, it would catch on fire. Really, really nice. So 17 years later, here's what $130,000 gets you. A car that that looks, you know, uh, every bit as good as it did the day it rolled off the line. And that's really a testament to Mercedes in this era. They, they were capable of building unbelievable cars. Uh, there's not a lot of them I really do like. I like the SLs, obviously. And I like this car. And I like some of the um, E-Class sedans and I'll always be a wagon freak. But this car, really checks a lot of boxes. Um, what this car is, remember uh, back in the day, I hate to date myself, but back in the day there used to be sleeper cars. And they were cars that were intentionally kind of uh, taking, a, taking the bling out of it. So you could order a Chevy 2 and have those steel wheels and it looked like something that was you know, not gonna be able to keep up with anything. Uh, but light to light, you know, you could get it with a 396 or a, 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 some super engine, four-speed Muncie, that would just blow the doors off anything else that had all the, the bling. Well, this car sort of is a tribute to that area, era. Uh, a sleeper car is a car that no one's gonna notice. You know, quite frankly, when I drive this car down the road, nobody looks at it, nobody thinks anything about it. And I'm fine with that. I'm beyond the point where I'm looking for someone to Give me the double thumbs up going down the interstate because they uh, agree with whatever brand I'm driving. What I like about this car is it just is very good at what it does without drawing a lot of attention to itself. Uh, so, you know, Volkswagen uh, GTI back in the day too, that was a sleeper car. All those cars that were super performance oriented without blasting it to the world that that's what they are or were. And so there's the CL600. You get a 12-cylinder beast of an engine, same engine they put in the Maybach from this era. Uh, twin turbos that spool up more torque than probably should be street legal. Uh, matter of fact, this car is so fast, 
even with these big wide wheels on it and the traction control engaged, it has trouble keeping the, the rear end from breaking loose. Even with all the, the traction control and everything going, there's so much torque at the rear wheels, it, it, it has trouble not uh, lighten them up when you, when you step on it. So enough yammering, let's go for a ride. And I'll try to explain as we're going down the road why this car is what it is. But I want people to get excited about the CL600. This car hasn't gotten its due by gosh, and I'm here to defend it. Okay, so here we are in the CL600. I'm gonna fire it up and uh, we'll go for a little ride. We're in the warehouse, so you'll hear a little bit of the uh, exhaust note coming through the warehouse when I start it up. Uh, it, it's got a good sound. It's not super aggressive. It's not a Borla, uh, you know, stainless intake or something like that, or stainless exhaust, but it, it's got a nice sound, but it's intentionally muffled uh, to the point where it's not screaming, hello, look at me. So one cool thing though, any 12 cylinder, really, this isn't just a Mercedes thing. You could get a BMW 750 or, or the Mercedes or even the Jaguars, uh, Ferraris, of course. All the 12 cylinders sound different when they when they fire up. It's almost a an industrial uh, kind of sound to the starter where it just boosh, boom, then fires up. You'll you'll hear it. I love it. Isn't that cool? It just boosh, boom, it's great. All right, like any good Mercedes, got a couple of obligatory uh, gremlins from electrical. So we got a marker light, which is a little light up front a standing light and uh, needs washer fluid so yeah that's just that's just the fun of it I, there's a famous person on youtube right that says don't fix everything leave one thing broken uh, to appease the car gods well that's what's appeasing the car gods in this one because we'll talk a little bit later but uh not the greatest maintenance history on these all right let's go for a little cruise to the warehouse I'm gonna turn the air conditioner on because it's Nashville, it's a thousand degrees. And uh, once we get outside, we'll put the windows up. Yeah, we're not gonna go for a huge long drive. I just wanna take it out, exercise a little bit, try to go through some of what this car does really well. The first thing is it's gonna go over these railroad tracks out here. And now that there's a functioning ABC suspension on this car, it's just so smooth, it's so big. You know, these seats just support you. They're not massively uh, bolstered to the point where you can't stand to be in it. It, it. It adjusts a million different ways. It's comfortable. You can, you can drive this car and be in it for three or four hours, not even really realize it. Let's put the windows up. All right, so here's our first uh, experience of why I love the CL600. Here's the railroad tracks. Now these beat me up in a lot of my cars, but watching this car, you know, the camera's sitting basically on the seat. It doesn't barely even move. It's just so smooth and so soft. Yet, if you go take a corner, you'll be able to whip around that corner uh, and the ABC suspension stiffens up and pushes the right strut the right direction so that uh, the car handles super well 30 miles an hour on that sign right there we're not going to exceed that because this is a nice little residential neighborhood here in nashville we'll go up here though and get on an on-ramp and open it up a little bit but it's so quiet in here you know the, the stereo has i don't know probably 10 or 12 speakers it's one of the older bose design systems but it sounds so good. It's just everything, you know, the subwoofer still works. You can stand to be in this car. It's not gonna kill you, but it just provides so many smiles per dollar, right? Like that's what it's all about for me is you can you can buy expensive cars. You can, you know, 
know, that's, that doesn't take any talent. Any knucklehead can go out and buy a brand new car. And man, there's some cool ones out there, right? Like the Hellcat or the C8 Corvette. They're great, really cool cars. But how many of you are you going to see when you pull up to Cars and Coffee that day? I, I, there's probably five C8 Corvettes already out at uh, Cars and Coffee here in, in Franklin and Nashville. Um, and so, what, you know, what's the fun of that? This car, I, I don't know that I've ever seen another CL600 in Nashville. I, I occasionally will see the uh, AMG, the CL55, which is equally as cool. Uh, but I don't think I've ever seen another CL600 in Nashville. It's just a rare car that so much fun. Let's get on old Ellington Parkway here. We're going to open it up a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy, right? So let's just say we want to merge. You know, how fun is that? The car just explodes. And it just, you know, you, you have to get your foot out of it because it, it's not going to it's not going to run out of torque. It's going to keep shifting and banging through the gears and delivering torque, you know, for for days. Uh, this car is so fast it actually opens up the sunroof a little bit when you really step on it. The sunroof slides back. <laughs> so you know, there's faster cars out there. I'm not trying to pretend like this is going to take down a you know, a Lam Lambo or a Porsche GT or something, but, you know, at the, at the money this is going to cost uh, for someone to buy a car like this, boy, I'd be interested to hear in the comments if, if there's something out there that uh, everybody thinks is, is, is better than these 12-cylinder twin-turbo Mercedes. Uh, and you can get this engine in a lot of different variants, uh, you know, the Pretty sure the sedans and the convertibles both had the twin turbo as well. I know obviously they had 12 cylinders, but I'm pretty sure you could get the SL or the S class in the twin turbo engine. Um, so smooth, so quiet. And you, you know, nobody's going to know what it is really unless they're car people like us. They're, they're not going to know what this car is when you pull up to them. And, that's fine, you know, a lot of, you're not gonna really impress anybody, it's not that kind of car, but I think people that are really into cars would really appreciate the CL600 if they got some more, some more pub. Uh, there's just not many cars that are gonna do more than what this car does. Now, is it a track car? No, you're not gonna take this car to the track, right? It's not that kind of car. But it does have a back seat, you could take your kids to park or, you know, down the road uh, and down the Natchez Trace and go hiking or uh, uh, go to Leaper's Fork or something and have an afternoon. It's, it's a great car for that. Probably not a car I drive every day nowadays. You know, we'll get back to the shop. We're going to talk a little bit about maintenance and where this car has a weak, weak point. Uh, but... You know, you get into it. If you enjoy turning wrenches a little bit, these cars aren't hard to work on, and there's so much information now on the internet for what to do and how to fix them and how to keep them going. Parts aren't expensive. You can get parts for this car pretty darn reasonable if you don't go to Mercedes and buy them. All right. Yeah, I had to let up there because it was just going way too fast, too soon. <laughs> power. I don't have the courage or the desire anymore to go up on the interstate and take this, you know, really in the crazy range. Just suffice to say, it's it's fast. And this car's got 111,000 miles on it. This is, this is no spring chicken that's been babied and kept in a garage and you know, trailered all its life. This car has been driven. It's, it's got a couple of dings here and there. It's, but it's a beautiful car, 
and it's held up really well. The interior is in great shape. Just, uh, you know, mechanically, they have some weak spots, but the, the main essential parts of it, the 12 cylinder engine, you know, you're never going to throw a piston or something. It's, it's always going to be a great car, except for, you know, some of the stuff that breaks along the way. But it's, it's rare that you're going to have to rebuild the engine or something crazy like that. It's just, you know, the parts that bolt on the engine have their weak links and, of course, the ABC suspension. Uh, but it's a great car. Have I, have I said that yet? Let's get around this corner. All right, so we're going to wrap this up. Uh, the CL600, you know, it's just that combination of so many different things that, that uh, adds together, and I hate to use an old cliche, but the sum of the parts is greater than the whole. You know, you, you, you maybe look at this car and you think, oh, the styling, kind of nothing aggressive about it. There's no carbon fiber or big flares or... Uh, spoilers or anything like that but it's such a classic design that this car is going to continue to stand the test of time and look really good as it goes forward um, fit and finish you know some of the last Mercedes to, uh, to come out of that era that were still just incredible in the quality of the materials put in and, and the way they put it together rarity this car is pretty rare uh, they, they, you know, they're, they're mass produced. They weren't, you know, AMG limited production models. But it, you're not going to see too many CL600s out there. Uh, so you, you know, you get a little bit of that cool factor. Wow, what, what is that? Is that two door S class? What? And then they look a little closer. And 12 cylinder. Wow, cool. And not many people realize that this is a twin turbo 12 cylinder. You know, they, they made a supercharged eight. But uh, strapping two turbo chargers on a, what, five and a half liter 12 cylinder? Yeah, you can force some air through an engine when you got 12 pistons going up and down and two uh, turbos blowing air into it. it it'll it'll turn, some, turn some gas into noise, so to speak. Uh, so yeah, cool factor. Um, reliability, we're gonna talk about, you know, depreciation, brutal. On these cars, hundred thirty thousand dollars. You know, I'm going to show you the uh, the car uh, CarMax offer on this car, which granted is wholesale, but it ain't anywhere near that. Uh, but the great thing is, you know, it's probably done depreciating at this point. You could buy a, a CL600 for you know, I don't know, six, eight, ten thousand dollars, twelve, if you really want to get one with low miles and super clean. And it's probably always going to be worth that. You know, it, it might go up in value. These were pretty rare production cars. Uh, it's not like there's a million of them. So, you know, 12 cylinder always has that uh, kind of panache of what people want. These cars could go up in value. I don't know that I'd buy it thinking that it was a great investment, but it definitely could go up. Um, so, uh, you know, of all the, all the factors kind of put together, I think this one, these cars really add a lot to the equation and they're just great cars that I think uh, you know drivers and, and kind of internet car people uh, youtubers that are into cars and all of our favorite people that we watch on YouTube you know this is a car that kind of gets that universal head nod of oh yeah the CL600 you know it's just in that range of yeah that's that's one of the cars that that we all think or, uh, or should all think hopefully we all think or are you know in that rare breed where they may not be on everyone's first uh, top five list of coolest car from the early 2000s but when you talk about it then people think oh yeah yeah that was that was a pretty pretty awesome car all right so i love the car let's get out and talk about why it's you know a fraction of what they used to cost. So, Mercedes CL600 12 cylinder twin turbo. Gosh, why aren't they 25, 30, $35,000 nowadays? 
Well, the reason is maintenance. Uh, these are so incredibly expensive to maintain. Not so much from a part standpoint, but uh, a time a service standpoint. You know, if you take this car anywhere, uh, forget the Mercedes dealership, you can't take it there. But if you take this car anywhere, you know, a, a good tech's gonna charge 125, you know, 135, maybe $150 an hour to work on this car. And there's nothing on this car that can be done in 20 minutes, right? So any bill is going to be three, four hours of labor at minimum. And then the parts are, you know, they're Mercedes expensive. They're not new Mercedes expensive, but they're expensive. So you can figure any, any time this car throws a light, 1500 bucks is the minimum that it's going to cost to get this car fixed. So they're extremely expensive to maintain. But if you're into cars, and you don't mind cruising the forums and uh, kind of hacking into it a little bit, and you got a couple of tools, you can work on this car. It's not that complicated. Matter of fact, if you have uh, some ability to read codes, these cars are somewhat easier to work on because especially this one will, will kind of tell you what's wrong with it with all the specific codes that it throws. But they are very expensive to keep on the road, and there, there's no hiding that. You know, you'll get, it, it, I don't know if anything this car needs, but it wouldn't surprise me if I had a you know, $500 parts bill come up in the next thousand miles. It's just, it's just part of these cars. So you go from a $130,000 car to a $7,500, $10,000 car. But when you go to fix it, you're not fixing a $7,500 car. You know, you're still fixing that $130,000 car. So they're crazy expensive to maintain. That's why they're, the value's falling so bad on them. But good for me. It makes it so I can afford this car. Uh, I can't and wouldn't buy a $130,000 car, but I would buy this. I'd do it again, I'm sure I will. The day I sell this car, I'll be looking for my next one. And uh, I hope that this will get some more love heading towards the CL600. I love these cars and I appreciate everyone listening and uh, tuning in. Maybe hit that subscribe button, that helps me. I'm gonna make some more videos with the other cars I have and a couple that aren't here. And I'll update the uh, YouTube page when I do that. Thanks so much.